Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the second part of Sophistic Python link. Uh, for this example, I'm using Jupyter Lab, and currently I'm using 3.11 version of Python. Uh, therefore, I have copied uh, this uh, code from the Sophistic website, uh, which is for the 3.8 or the higher version of Python. If you go and check uh, this example, connect to CDB, you will find this code here. The first one is for 3.7. And the second one is for a Python version 3.8 or higher. So I have copied this code as it is and pasted in my Jupyter lab. I have only changed these two paths here, uh, which are for the DLL functions. Um, you can check uh, where you have installed your Sophistic. So that would be your uh, path for these DLLs. If I show you in my case, it's in the C drive. So I have copied uh, this first path for uh, these DLLs. And then if you go back, then the other DLLs are placed in this folder. So you have to copy both these paths and uh, replace here the first one and the second one. In here, you can see that uh, uh, there is an option for 32-bit uh, DLL also. If you know you are using 64-bit, then if you just delete this one, uh, it will, it, it's also fine. This code will work. And the other thing, um, there are some function uh, which uh, have been used here. Uh, this one and the, this one, uh, you can know more about uh, these function if you just uh, visit Sophistic uh, help documentation and you go to this uh, CDB description, uh, you will find the detail about this function on this page and you can read about them. What are those function and what does they do? So that's the first part. In this part, I'm just uh, accessing, I have set the environmental path uh, variable, environment path variable. And then I have uh, just provided the path for uh, DLL functions. So that's the only thing I'm doing in this part, in this code. So let's just uh, run this code and let's see if uh, this one works. So it's using 64-bit uh, application and it's accessing the 64-bit uh, DLLs uh, for this uh, part. And in the second part, uh, I'm connecting my CDB file uh, with this Python. So I have also copied, uh, if we go back, this part. So if you see this part, connect to CDB, this is the code which actually uh, get access to the uh, CDB file. So in this one, you just need to change this path. Uh, you need to check uh, where uh, you have placed your CDB file and you have to provide this path here. And one thing uh, you also uh, have to be careful about, uh, about this, um, if your path is wrong and there is no CDB file located there, then by default, this code will generate a dummy CDB file and you will not get any data because it's just a dummy file. So if you go on the top and check uh, here, they have also mentioned, uh, please modify the CDB file, CDB path in the code. If this file uh, does not exist, then it will be created because of this value. So. If you are seeing like there is a file, but you are not getting any data. So there might be a reason that you have provided the wrong path or uh, you are using the wrong uh, path here for the DLL functions or you are using the wrong DLL. So these three things uh, you need to check if you are not getting any data from your CDB file. I have replaced this CDB file path with the link variable. Instead of using this long path, I'm just using uh, this variable uh, in which I have stored this part. For this example, I have created a small model using Teddy text input. Uh, let me show you the model. It's just a triangular frame with three elements and each element is divided into 10 sub beams. Uh, we will extract the node information uh, from the CDB file of this model. And then we will also extract the beam information. And then uh, we will extract the normal force and the bending moment of this model uh, using a CDB file. Let's just uh, run this uh, code and let's see what's the status of our CDB file. So CDB status three, and now it has been closed. So this is the connection. 
So whenever you want to extract something, first you have to connect to CDB and then you have to read that CDB file. That's what I have done here in this uh, part. In this part, I'm using this file, sophistic underscore Darton, and this file is provided by the sophistic. If you go and check your examples folder in Python, you will find this file, sophistic underscore Darton dot py. This file is very important uh, without using this file, you will not be able to read any information from your CDB file because this file contains different classes and these classes have the different field. It means uh, from C node, uh, you can only read uh, the node number, internal node number, degree of freedoms, and the X, Y, Z coordinates. So if you want to read the beam information, then you have to uh, write the specific class. You have to check this file um, and you have to check the class name because if the class name is wrong or the field is wrong, you will not be able to uh, read anything. You will just get an error. And there is this uh, key value, it's also important. If you go back and check, so I have copied this code from the Sophistic uh, documentation. You can just copy and paste here. You need to provide the link or the file path of your CDB. So in here, they are using C node. Uh, which we have taken from the Sophistic underscore Darton C node again here. And then uh, in here, uh, we are using this uh, value, the key value. If you want to know more about this key value, uh, you can go and check this uh, CD base uh, description. In here, they have described everything. So for this example, if you see they have uh, written uh, in case of read nodes, uh, you just need this key, uh, which is 20, and this key is the KWH key. And the KWL key is the zero, you don't need that one. But in case if you want to read the displacement and the support forces, uh, you need to read, uh, or you need to use both the keys, KWH and KWL. So the, the KWL value is the load case, uh, in case uh, you want to read the support forces and displacement. So in this case, it's zero. And then I'm just uh, importing my node number and then X, Y, Z coordinates. And again, uh, it's the size of uh, this uh, node data. It will go through all the node uh, values and then it will store or the print them, and then it will close the CDB. So let's just uh, run this part and let's see. And here we can see that our CDB status is three, and these are the node values, node numbers, and this X, Y, and Z coordinates. So you can see at the end, after reading all the nodes, printing out the data, it uh, closed the CDB file. And now in this part, I'm, importing the pandas library to um, convert this data into dictionary and from dictionary into data frame. Again, it's the same code, but I have just defined the function, uh, defined node function, and then I have provided this link, CDB path link. And again, I, I have just added this data at the end to convert, instead of printing, I have just stored uh, this data into data variable and then I'm converting that data into data frame. So let's just uh, run this one and run this. So this is uh, my data frame. It's a node number. This is X coordinates, this is Y, and this is the Z coordinate. And then I'm just separating these values. And after that, I am plotting these values. So you can see that my nodes have been plotted in this graph. So you can uh, extract the data and then you can plot in uh, Python. In this part, uh, I'm accessing the beam nodes. For that, it's the same code uh, which we have used uh, in case of node data. The only thing I have changed here is the C beam. It depends on the class. If we go back in sophistic data and if I write here, C beam. So it means if I have to read the beam information, it's the beam information. 
then I have to use this class CBeam. And in the CBeam class, what I can read, it's the beam number, the node number start at the end. And again, we have to just use one key value. That's what I have done here. I have changed here instead of C node, C beam. And here also C, instead of C node, C beam. Here also C beam. And then I have also changed the key value. Instead of 20, I have changed this one to 100. And I have just done this extra thing to store uh, these values in these variables. Again, I'm converting them into dictionary. And then from dictionary, uh, I'm converting them into data, uh, data frame. So let's just run this one. And run this one. Uh, you see it's the beam number, it's the start node, and it's the end node. And here I'm extracting, again, I have created the function and I'm extracting the node information. So I have the beam number and I have the number of the start node and the end node of that beam. Here I am extracting the node and the X, Y, Z coordinates of that uh, nodes of that start and end nodes of the beam. And here um, you can, let me just run this one and see this. So in here, this is the X, Y and Z coordinates. In here, this is the first beam is the X coordinate of the first beam of the node one, and this is the node two. It means the start node and the end node. This is a beam one X coordinate, beam one Y coordinate, beam one Z coordinate, and so on. And these are the empty cell. Let me just delete this one. This one. And in the third part, I'm extracting the beam forces. And again, the code is the same. I have just uh, replaced this one from C beam to C beam force. And uh, here, now you can see this is the key value one or two, and then I'm replacing this one with the uh, load case one. In my ready file, I have considered the self weight, the load case one. So I will extract the beam forces for the load case one. So I have used the second key value, which is one load case one. And let's just run this one. And we can see the beam uh, forces. So it's the bending moment and it's the normal force and it's the beam length. So you can see it's the start of the beam and the end of the beam. This is a beam one, this is a beam two. So it's the start of the beam, which is zero. And this is the end of the beam and similarly start and the end. So that's how uh, you can um, extract your CD information from the CDB file. Let's just um, change uh, the, the value here and let's see if this one is dynamic. I will change this one to um, 20 and I will change this one to uh, 20 also of uh, the height of the structure. And let's just run this one. So after analyzing, uh, we can see that I have changed the dimension of uh, the structure. And now we will import this CDB and let's see if uh, this one is working or no. I will go back and I will run everything. And let's see. So you can see that the beam length has been changed from zero, one to two. So every time you make any changes in your uh, file, CDB file, then it will automatically be uh, incorporated. You can see that here it's also a uh, different shape. So that's how uh, you can connect your Sophistic CDB file with the Python. I hope you like this video and I wish you good luck and hope to see you in the next one. Till then, have a nice day and bye-bye.